Welcome everybody. Nico, Scarlet Moon here with your Path Watchers report on the incoming wave that will be here to stay for all individuals, collectives, and experiences. This week's wave, personified by the Death Card and the Devil, illustrates the elimination of entrapment. While these cards may appear frightening, it is not so. Remember, not to oversimplify or split into black and white dualistic thinking. You might even interpret this combination to represent the death of the demon, if that is more comforting. As March draws to a close, there is an enactment of a great release in the spirit of the displacement wave. The devil, representing here as the binds of attachment, tethers to detrimental, detractive influences, is eliminated. Remember, Death is an end we accept as a natural, understandable, and even necessary process, bringing neither surprise nor shock. Considering the elimination of soul contracts commencing, it's no surprise that the attachment mechanic is now terminated. This wave is easing acceptance of transitions that have been resisted either by the self or by others. This is a freedom combination the means by which certain beings would attach, control, or bind themselves to another are no longer functioning in the way they once did. The support for that dynamic and mechanic is now obliterated on a multidimensional level. Control patterns, spiritual attachments, social and environmental scripts no longer attract or maintain in this new dynamic. They don't manifest anything anymore. There may be some emotional and psychological aftermath in the short term, but only for the short term. This energy is no sloth. Some may not be prepared for such an eventuality, even if it is starting a huge ripple into true soul empowerment. Remember, it is healing. It is more than a mass cord cutting between all things. It is an obliteration of the cord attachment mechanic. The power of creation, manifestation, and all spiritual work has always been quality over quantity. As this lands and keeps, it will become much more easy and available for all to step in to their own personal power. This is true freedom in the highest interest of all concerned. This is autonomy by release. Freedom to embody the highest expressions of self more than ever. Freedom to embody love and divinity in its pure form. And so it is. All right there, Aquarius. Now that we see what's going on with the incoming wave, remember it's here to stay. It's not just here for one week and it's here for everybody, not just one sign. Let's have a look and see how it's actually going to be playing out for you as it lands. So for the archetypal themes of what's going on in the background, right? We're talking about background energies. So behind all occurrences and all areas and spaces of your life, we have the Wheel of Fortune upright. And I'm actually getting this, the term upregulate <laughs> is kind of the term that's really sticking out to me right now. So we talk about upregulation. What is that? It's an amplifier, right? We are amplifying um, the amount of returns, the amount of work, the amount of abundance, everything is getting put uh, yeah, on, on an amplifier this week. And for the Wheel of Fortune, remember we talked about with the wave of, you know, there's this big focus on the end of the attachment mechanic and the, you know, the attachment dynamic. This could absolutely be, you know, a lot of your own space, a lot of your own, um, your own priorities, your own dreams, your own goals, your own abundance, your own, uh, your own resources now having more room to expand with the release of that attachment dynamic, with the release and obliteration of that attachment mechanic in the universe, right? Because now all of the sudden everything has room to grow. The stuff that shouldn't be there, the energies and the uh, just the, 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 the allocation of you that has been maybe out of balance, getting funneled or invested into the wrong things, 
getting taken away from you, you know, sometimes it's, it, it's, it's being uh, siphoned off, that's not happening. So what happens in that empty space? Well, to fill that void, it looks like you get things a little bit differently. It's not just about displacing with the new, but it's expanding what needs a chance. And so we're upregulating what's there. You could be seeing a lot of dramatic increases going on in your life wherever it goes because the Wheel of Fortune is turning the dial up. So as we say goodbye to, you know, the attachment dynamics, the scripts, all that kind of stuff, all of a sudden your personal goals, your personal dreams, even things that you suppress, even the things that you might, uh, might have been conditioned to think were irrational or impractical or, or maybe just not suitable to, you know, old paradigm sensibility, um, have their day in the sun displacing all of the stuff that you may have just appropriated uh, because it seemed like the, 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 the sensible thing to do by consensus standards. And now with the Wheel of Fortune, it's a big fantasy fulfillment opportunity for you. Because when all of that stuff that doesn't belong there is displaced by that which needs more room to grow, the entire layout, the entire landscape of your life, all areas, seems a lot more fertile, seems a lot more substantial. And it looks like with the News and Arrivals card with the Six of Pentacles upright, we actually see that there is this, this displacement from, you know, even a few weeks ago, again, these waves are here to stay. There, this displacement is coming in because we're cutting something off and then all of a sudden what is taking its place is something that wants to give to us. So it's important to pay attention every once in a while to what have we been holding out on. You know, sometimes um, when it comes to family relationships, friendship relationships, uh, business relationships, even groups, followings, you know, um, whatever is going on, sometimes we kind of put all our eggs in that basket and hope to God it's going to have a payoff someday. This is a week where there's a bit of grace and a bit of mercy. You get your basket back just before something really decides to go south. And you, funny enough, start to see <laughs> that your eggs will hatch better in your own care and in the care of whatever alternative is being presented this week with the Six of Pentacles. Because the Six of Pentacles is all about generosity. It's all about care. It's all about people actually giving, investing in us as I say, taking chances on us. But what has to happen is we have to let go of that which depends on us to co-create its reality, right? Because there are like, there are sometimes circumstances and beings and people out there who, um, for whatever reason, whatever their soul actually is, need other people to hold up their reality. They can't create their own reality. They can't do it themselves. Um, they don't, they're not in a place in their development where they've developed the capacity to do that. And so you might be holding up another person's reality instead of building your own. Not anymore. Not after now. Not because, you know, when, when that gets kicked to the curb, we have somebody who's already working on the same reality that you want to. They don't need you to do it. In fact, they have something to give you. So it's a very interesting week to see unfold. As we get down to material and business, we got the Page of Wands upright. Talk about upregulating. The fire is burning brighter this week. In fact, with the upregulation with the Page of Wands upright, you may be noticing a lot of competition going out of the way so that you can actually heed a call, heed a clarion call, it seems, when it comes to either a financial or professional priority that is going to be paying out very, very quickly. Because with the Page of Wands, nothing goes slow. This is something where it's kind of like, okay, you want to do this? Great, we're starting next week and you're getting paid the week after that, or that week itself. In fact, with the Page of Wands, something is actually picking up a lot of steam for, you know, that even, even something that you've actually had kind of going on in the background, maybe something that um, was taking a slow and steady wins the race kind of approach. I'm actually feeling like there is something now. It's picking up traction. It's starting to move faster. It's getting upregulated. I don't know how many more times I'm going to say that in this video. Forgive me. But with the Page of Wands, ultimately, there is this release of the shackles, release of the balls and chains, and now something gets to flourish that, you know, don't give yourself a hard time. You may have been taking the long way around to 
by going through all of these other people and all of these other connections and all of these other distractions. And this week, no more. Just you. As we get to love and relationships, we have the Nine of Cups in reverse. And this is kind of more of a warning. <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily the, a bad thing, though. But with upregulation and the Nine of Cups reversed, now we're talking about, hey, excess. <laughs> Keep things in balance this week. Because the Nine of Cups reverse is indicating for both of you who are um, either uh, available or in uh, exclusive relationships, there is actually a great deal of good news coming in, but it's almost like there's a way to party it up too hard. And we want to make sure that we are allowing ourselves to save some for later. The Nine of Cups reversed is indicating that there is um, some wonderful news coming from, from both a partner about what's going on in their life at the same time something is happening for you. And we want to make sure that we are taking our next step in a careful, deliberate, intentional way, not an impulsive, mindless way, because sometimes when we have the time, the energy, the, con the confidence, the, the money, the power, uh, we decide to make a big decision that, you know, of course, we're, we're doing with, with nothing but the best of intentions, but the expression itself may be more than the intention bargained for. And you want to make sure that you know how to cut back a little bit. Because with the Nine of Cups reversed, it's a beautiful energy. But there's something about it that needs to be brought back into balance. For those of you who are, you know, wondering what that could be, yeah, it could be a relationship that maybe uh, we have a wonderful chemistry, but we want to make sure we're not being reckless and taking off too fast if it's new. If you're currently, you know, uh, coupled, this could absolutely indicate maybe a bit of overspending or maybe spending some, you know, too much time again, indulging, then, then maybe actually applying and infusing this goodness into the rest of our space and the rest of our experience. It's an overwhelmingly good energy I'm getting from it. It's not the usual kind of, huh, uh, nine of cups reversed. So just, just make sure to play around with it. Enjoy it. Everything about the severing of the tether dynamic is working for you this week. So that is what I've got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And should you ever want to get a session, go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.